Welcome HRW fans. Well, it's been about nine years since I tuned the 98 car back there. And now with this latest release from Slotted, well, <laughs> this thing is legendary and it just has to get tuned. Not much has changed really over the years, so I'm not going to do a whole lot different than I did back then. So let's just get started. After we get the body off, we're just going to go straight to the front axle and discuss how we're going to set that up. Not much different again, like from the old chassis to the new. There is one change, though. I want to show you this. You'll notice that in the old car here, you have the snap-in guide. It worked well enough. It's still in this one. Many miles on it. But you can see the improvement here. We now have a set screw or screw design there on the top to hold it in place. Plus, we have openings here on the front of the guide right there where you can put your set screws to secure your lead wires. So some people who do not like the set screws in the top, which I know there are people out there that do not like this setup, seems to work okay for me, but it can lead to some breaking. So you can get your ferrules, some M2 set screws, and go through the front. So that's a pretty nice change. Just wanted you to be aware of it. Okay, now it's just time to remove the axle to get to work. You've seen just taking the tires off, just grab it on each end like this, and just rotate and pull with light pressure. There we go. And there we go. Now I'm going to remove the carriers and these caps. I just don't use them. I'm just going to use the set screw method. Now I can pop these out to the bottom. Just like that. There's one. Just using the axle and popping it out. And there's two. So, now we're going to talk about tires and truing them up. So before we get this in the tire truer, you'll notice you have no bushings. So you're going to have to add bushings so you can fit it into your truer. I just use the slot car corner standard bushings. I just uh, order them in bulk and uh, keep them there on my bench. So we're going to slip on a couple of the bushings like that. Now we will just simply twist the wheel back on and it's nice and tight, tight enough for what we're going to do. As you can see here, there's some flash molding right around the wheel here. You can see it there on the inside and here as well. So before we do anything with the tires, we're going to clean that up. And now I've got it mounted up into our machine and we're going to start the treating process. I only do one wheel at a time. As you can see, I've already worked on this one. I have it set for about six and a half, seven volts. Doesn't take very long. A little 400 grit, 200 grit. And you're just gonna take off enough to true it and get the, uh, the flash molding off. It's just important to do that before we put the tires. As far as the machine goes, I've had some questions. You know, I've seen some comments on Facebook and in the forum. And I just have to say this. Um, I compare this machine to any of the parts of other hobbies. If you're gonna paint, for a hobby, you need brushes, right? Um, you know, if you're gonna golf, you need clubs. And if you're gonna tune slot cars, you're gonna need a tire machine eventually because the tires, getting them round and true, uh, wheel maintenance is one of the most important things you can do to improve the, you know, the overall performance of the car. And now that they're ready to be readily available, more readily available, um, you know, you just have to look at making the investment. It's a tool that'll help you get the job done. Anyway, I've already done this side. I'll go ahead and shut that off and show you. Just not a lot of material, just enough to chew it. That's pretty much my stopping point for the fronts. Now I'll do the other side to match it. And then, you got it, we'll talk about tires. Okay, it's time to talk tires. But this time, we're just gonna talk about the fronts for now. And that's because, well, the fronts are just as important on a slot car as, as the rears can be, just like in one-to-one -one racing, except, of course, a little bit different application. In our hobby, we don't want any grip from the front tires. It just leads to added friction, and that can scrub off speed, and <laughs> we don't want that, do we? So we do our own zero grips. Now, unlike in the years past, we've got a couple of different options. Uh, first of all, quick slicks. They make an excellent tire. 
This is the 32Z, and I've used this on uh, several cars. And uh, it's a great fit on this wheel, and it pretty much is a slip-on and gives you that zero grip effect. So if you like that, then look up the Quick Slicks CB32Z. That'll get the job done. Also, Paul Gage, he makes a nice low-profile tire. Now, uh, they're easily to sand. They slip on the wheel. This is the 18095LM, and I was right there for the profile, and really easy to slip on, and with Paul Gage urethane, they're very fast to sand and true, so that's an option. And of course, there is the stock tire, and for me, in the tire machine, it's just easy to work with. So that's what we've done with the old tires on the first cars, and I think that's what we're going to do with this one. So we're just going to go ahead and use the tires that came with the car. So with the stock tires on, I'll show you, it doesn't take a whole lot. I'm using the 200 grit option, just a little pressure right around seven volts, and you can really cut through this rubber kind of fast. Now it's a little bit more pressure than I usually do. I'm just trying to show you how fast you can turn these down. You don't want to overheat them, but it doesn't take very long. And you're gonna have this tread design in this tire, nice and true. Tread design will pretty much be gone all the way, so you'll have a smooth tire. So you have that. Now you might want to angle it so that the outside of the tire, just the very outside, is all that makes contact with the track. A lot of people do that. And it's easy enough to do, just taking the memory board. You can just do the outside, put a slight double on it, and that'll be it. You don't need a whole lot. So you can just sit here like that. And it's true. All you can do is just look at it by sight, and you can tell that a little bit goes a long way. But then you can always put it in your truer and then you set it block and take a look at it. But I'm gonna tell you now, that right there, just by looking at it, I'll adjust that. Maybe you can see that it better. But you can see that we have an angle. So now, just the, uh, the outside edge of the tire here is really all that's gonna make contact with the track. Pretty much what we did 10, 12 years ago, we're doing again today. Okay, time to coat the front tires. You really don't have to. I know a lot of people feel it's a very important part, but you know, once we've chewed these up and we have such little of the tire making contact, you know, just not cleaning it is gonna make it a zero grip in about 10 or 15 laps. But I understand you want that lowest friction as possible, so we coat it. I don't use any of the hard chemicals like nail polish or any of the poly paint. It just makes them too hard and on my wood track too loud. They just sound like a set of marbles running around the track. And personally, it just drives me nuts. I can't stand it. So I use a product like this. It's like Future, but since they don't make it anymore, uh, Quick Shine, I've seen this uh, in all the marts, Dollar Generals here, you know, inexpensive and it does a trick only takes about two or three coats and you'll have a nice zero grip surface. So that's just what we're gonna do. So you don't need a whole lot. Just have a little bit here on the Q-tip. You don't even have to turn your machine on. You can just put a coat this way you're not rotating it too fast, splattering everywhere, getting it all over your machine. There we go. Now we can just do the other side. Might have to reload with the product, but usually I can get enough on both. There we go. Good to go. Now I'll let this sit for, I don't know, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It'll be dry and uh, you can turn it on low voltage if you want to. You just don't want to have a lot of the product flying off the tire. So I just keep it mounted here, put a paper towel here. I mean, I have shown it before where it's rotating and running at a very low voltage. And you can do that if you want. 
maybe one bolt or so. But before I do that, I just make sure it's mostly dry. There's no drops that are gonna go flying around. So anything that you do have will drip down here on the paper towel. But there you go, about three coats will be done. Do you have to do it over and over again? Not over and over again, but you will have to repeat the process after a while with so many laps as it does wear away. But then again, like I said, without cleaning the front tires, you're gonna end up with a pretty good zero grip without doing anything. Just uh, leaving them alone, and letting them absorb the track dust in the dirt and not taping them and not cleaning them. It's about as zero grip as you can ask for. Like I said, everybody has their different applications, the way they do things. It's the way I like to do it, and I'm just sharing it with you. So there you have it. We'll let it dry. We'll get it put back together. Okay, we have the axle installed back into the car. Just press the wheels on, just the reversal of how we took it apart and making sure we don't have a lot of free play. And yeah, we got some great action here. Remember that we're not using those carriers, the caps and the chassis. I've removed those. We're gonna use set screws. Now for the bottom part, I like to use these longer five millimeter set screws, the M2 set screws to go through the bottom of the chassis. They're just kind of deep, as you can see here, and it takes a pretty good screw to get the job done. So you got that through there, one and two. Now we might need one and two here on the top. We're gonna set up the front end and we'll get that adjusted. We'll just use uh, shorter screws for there. So for the top, you can just use a smaller set screw, like a two and a half or three, get into here and just start installing it. I have the other side already there. And just install it. And as usual, you just test as you go, okay? You know, make sure that you're not locking up the axle. See, I over tightened it on purpose, just to show you. Now back it off. And, no, not your yet. And, there we go. And just keep going. Ah, until, you guessed it, we have clearance clearance. Yeah, there we go. Now we have our setup block. We're gonna test it just to get that little tripod that I like just where the tires are just barely touching. That's exactly what we have. And as far as tools go, do you need a setup block? Yes, you do. If you're going to start doing this then you're going to need one but yep the tires are just barely they're not really supporting any weight of the chassis as you can see but they will spin they will do their job to support the front this is just a starting point as always you you set and tune your car to your track environment you know to, to your driving style how you like the car so every track is different how i set it up for mine it has no bearing on your track or at least uh, for the most part just depends elevations track surface etc but i like that so for me that's a good starting point so i know some folks are not really fans of the uh, soldered ends of the lead wires there and with the set screw method i will say with this new guide I do like the improvements of the guide, having the screw, be able to tighten it to adjust it. And also right here, you'll notice you have a nice little notch where the wire can be laid down so they could go to the side. But if you don't like the way Slotted does things there, you can change it over. So what I've done here is I've trimmed off the hard solder of the wire, the tinned wire. I've installed the ferrule with just enough on the end right there, just to, just to give it a little bit of overhang and then just a slight crimp not a whole lot you don't need much and then you have your braid there you can come in here from behind it and install get that in there and then now that you've done that instead of going through the top which I understand it can be difficult now 
you can come in through the front and you can install M2 set screw. So just use the screw that you took out on one side and now you can use it on this side and works just as well. And I know for some of you, you might prefer it. So just going to mention some aftermarket guide options. I know a lot of you like to do that. And one of them is the slot invasion guide. And we'll show a part number up there. These fit really well. And uh, the shaft diameter on the guide is just perfect. So there's just no free play. Really good fitment. But one thing you have to check, and you'll notice that this gap right here, and hopefully I can show you, right there on the front of the bulkhead. You might have some flash molding on the chassis. So just clean that up. Take an X-Acto blade, you know, just scrape it, clean it out, and you'll be good to go. So slot invasion guide, really good. Thicker blade. Another one that I like is Slotting Plus. I use this in a lot of cars. It's just like a generic order, you know. I'm low on screws, this, that, and I get these guides. And they really work well, except they're just a little tight. Just a few thousands, you know, inside the, the chassis there. And I mean, we're talking thousands. So all I do, take a little uh, old rat tail file, just run it through there. Just a couple of times, and oh yeah, look at that, nice and free. So if you want a longer guide, wood tracks, you know, just a little bit deeper than stock, then either the Slot Invasion or the uh, Slotting Plus would do the trick. Just get your file out and clean it up. Just a little bit about using the Slotting Plus guides, as they call it, the PCS guide, Personalized Cutting System. And as you can see here, the little areas on the guide are marked with these little lines. They're just kind of a suggestion where you can trim the guide as you see fit. So I just use a, a sprue cutter. You can use anything you want and cut this down and personalize it, as it says, to your track and your personal taste. So I like that. And if you like to use the front set screw method, as we just showed, pretty easy. 1 16th drill bit in your pin vise, and you can just go in here, drill your own holes, just go about halfway. That's all you need to do. Pretty easy. Now there's going to be some flash molding left behind. You can just run that drill bit right down through here, clean that off, and then right there on the front edges, you can just use an X-Acto blade, and you can trim that away. And now you can install the M2 set screws against the braid. So pretty easy to do. So I've trimmed this down. It's still right at 27 millimeters, so it has some really good length. Just uh, right around the ideal size for my track. Like I said, you just personalize it to your own. Then I got it set up for the set screw method. And then finally, I like to add one shim. This is the 10,000 SCC nylon shim, and that works great. We just test fit it here, and uh, oh yeah, nice and super smooth. Now it's just time to get the ferrules on and the braid. Good to go. Really like that guide. There we go. We're pretty much done with the front. Low cost too because we didn't purchase any other tires. You can if you want to. But we used the stock tires and I think we've got a really good result and the zero grip that we want. We moved the wires around here on the guide. That's just optional. You don't have to. Just thought I'd do that to show you an optional way to install the wires. I tightened up the screw a little bit on the guide. That's what it's for, just to adjust a little bit. I just, you know, I thought it was a little loose. And now we're gonna head back here. We're gonna discuss the motor and tires.